山かけうどん一丁出来上がりあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあらあら We're also going to need some dried shiitake mushrooms. You want to use the dry, they have a lot more flavor, and a little bit of kombu or seaweed. To prepare your kombu, take a small piece out, looking for about a 5 to 6 inch piece. We're also going to dab this with a paper towel just to remove any excess dirt, making sure not to really remove any of that white part. For these mushrooms, just go ahead and remove them out of the package. You don't really need to process them after this part, and I'm going to use about 8 for this recipe. Feel free to add more or less, or not at all, whether or not you like mushrooms. Now, super important, if you're making stock out of mushrooms, try to get dried mushrooms. They hold the most flavor because all the moisture has already been removed. Once you have your mise en place, place this into your water. I have about six cups for this recipe. We're going to go ahead and place this over a medium to high heat, trying not to hard boil our stock. We really want to bring this just to the point where it starts simmering and then turn it off. Once you start seeing your water start to simmer, this is when we're actually going to kill the heat and let it rest for about two to three minutes before we remove everything. After letting it steep for those few minutes, we're going to go ahead and remove the kombu, leaving in the mushrooms. Then we're going to go ahead and add in our fish flakes, kind of poke it around a little bit so that everything gets incorporated, and just let this rest for another two to three minutes. And our timer just went off for our dashi, so now we're going to strain it. To strain this, you are going to need a fine mesh strainer and preferably cheesecloth, but if you don't have cheesecloth, you can just use some paper towels. It'll be fine. Take your paper towels and line them in your strainer and go ahead and dump out all of your stock into your strainer paper towel concoction. This is going to give you a really nice clean broth. Dashi is a staple in Japanese cuisine and it is the heart of a lot of dishes. Just give this a taste. Mm. Yeah, that's the stuff. Since we are going to be using this dashi within the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to put it back into the pot we just used after cleaning it out to reheat this guy. So while our dashi is cooking, we're going to get the rest of our mise en place ready. This is going to involve our green onions, which are nice and dry now, and the Japanese mountain yam. This was kind of the star of there. You can see on the bowl, it's a bunch of grated yam. That's what this is. It's a little slimy. Not a huge fan. We'll see if I like it today. For your green onions, I'd like to make sure that they're really clean, but also really dry. So I rolled them in a towel and then pat them dry right before we start cutting them. When you cut your green onions, get really nice thin slivers, and we're going to go ahead and put this back onto a paper towel to get them really dry and crisp. Now to prepare this tuber, this Japanese mountain yam, I'm going to take a small piece of it. I want to show you the inside of this. It looks gorgeous, but it's a little slimy. It's a little weird. Not going to lie. To start processing this mountain yam, what we're going to do is we're going to peel the bottom two inches of the yam. Then we're going to take a box grater. I just used a regular box grater for this to go ahead and start grating the yam. And you're going to want to do this very gently. You don't want to press too hard on the yam and it's going to start getting a little slimy. You also want to make sure you do have a bowl underneath your box grater. Otherwise, it's going to it's going to be it's going to be a mess. Big, big time mess. Clean out your box grater, making sure to get all that delicious yamminess into your bowl. And I took a pair of chopsticks and whipped it together to incorporate some of the bigger bits that maybe didn't shred as easily, and it made it really, really nice. Look at that. Now for our last garnish is going to be some toasted nori. I just went ahead and cut this in half and cut it into strips. This is going to give a really nice flavor to our broth, but go ahead and feel free to leave this out if you're not a fan of seaweed. Now when I had said dashi really is a blank slate for any kind of flavors, we're going to go ahead and dress our bowls with a little bit of soy sauce, mirin, and a little bit of sugar to get some flavor into that dashi for our final broth. For this, I'm going to do equal parts mirin and soy sauce. Just make sure you kind of flavor this however you want. I like mine a little bit more salty, so I hit mine at the end with a bit more soy. So traditionally, they would use a raw egg yolk for this, but I don't know when these eggs are from. You really want to use a high, fresh egg. Like, it has to have come from the hen, maybe that day or the day before. But this guy, I don't know when it was made, so we're just going to lightly fry this. Take the world's cutest egg pan and crack the egg right in the middle of it. We're going to cook this on a medium low heat, making sure not to really fry the edges too hard. Now for the noodles, this is totally up to you. I really do like this store-bought stuff. It's still fresh frozen. It tastes really nice. We can make our own noodles. If you guys want to see some homemade udon, let me know in the comments down below. We'll get a video for that. 
To make these udon, just drop them in boiling water and break them up a little bit, and then we're gonna go ahead and strain these before we plate up. Everything is set, and now it's time to plate up. But remember, you can add whatever you want to udon. That's the best part. Now to plate this up, I'm gonna put a pretty heavy serving of udon into the bowl. Then we're gonna go ahead and ladle over a fair amount of our dashi, followed by our grated mountain yam, then our beautiful sunny side up egg, hit it with a bunch of green onions, a good amount of seaweed, and finally a dab of wasabi. And there it is guys, our beautiful utaka style udon. Now this is a very traditional dish out in Japan. I remember having this in Osaka and this just, oh, it smells so good. The best way to dig into this udon honestly is to break that egg yolk, swirl it all around and incorporate all of that ingredient. Just, just go at it. What's up buddy? What? You're so angry. What? Do you want fish flakes? Do you want something? You can't have it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, that's nice. And the little bit of wasabi kind of brings up the heat a little bit. The salt from the soy sauce, the sweetness from the sugar and the mirin. Oh, this is going to be good with some beer. Oh, that's good. It needs more green onion. I hope I've made Tanjiro proud and I hope I've made Utaka proud. This is such an easy thing to make, especially if you have the dashi already made sitting in the freezer. You can have this every day, really, if you wanted to. If you've ever had udon before, let me know down below or what is your favorite style noodle dish? I'm still partial to ramen, but udon does have a very, very, very soft spot in my heart. My name is Chef PK here on Foodie Friday. Get subscribed and remember, keep playing with your food. So I'm about to put some furakake on this. The kimchi kind. It's probably a lot.